All right, welcome door grow hackers to the door grow show. So if you are a property management entrepreneur that wants to add doors, make a difference, increase revenue, help others impact lives, and you're interested in growing your business and life, and you're open to doing things a bit differently, then you are a door grow hacker. Door grow hackers love the opportunities, daily variety, unique challenges, and freedom that property management brings. Many in real estate think you're crazy for doing it. You think they're crazy for not because you realize that property management is the ultimate high trust gateway to real estate deals, relationships, and residual income. At DoorGrow, we are on a mission to transform property management businesses and their owners. We want to transform the industry, eliminate the BS, build awareness, change perception, expand the market, and help the best property management entrepreneurs win. I'm your host, property management growth expert, Jason Hull, the founder and CEO of DoorGrow. Now let's get into the show. And my guest today, finally, we've got Appfolio here on the DoorGrow show. And I'm hanging out here with Nat Kunez. And I said your name correctly, I think. Yep. Awesome. Nat, welcome to the show. Really excited to have you here. Thank you. Super excited to be here as well. Cool. So Nat, you are the senior vice president at Appfolio. So tell us a little bit about, um, about yourself. Give us a little background on you and then let's, let's get into the topic at hand. Yeah. Um, so, uh, thanks for the, for the introduction. You know, I've been, uh, at Appfolio now about 10 years. Um, so pretty early on in our company's history, um, and gotten to, you know, grow with the company as well. Um, you know, our, our products are really geared around uh, being that all-in-one solution for property managers. And so, you know, from uh, everything that we wake up in the morning to do, it's, it's really to accomplish that one vision, which is, you know, helping our property managers uh, grow their businesses, uh, be more successful, pretty much everything that you guys, uh, sounds like you guys stand for as well. And so that's why I'm really excited to be on the show with you. Great. Yeah. Glad to have you here. So mo I was telling you right before the show, I mean, most of our clients use Appfolio. So, um, and the word on the street is that it's one of the most intuitive platforms to use easiest. And, um, and that says a lot about software. I mean, the number one challenge with software is adoption, like getting people to just use the thing, right? Let's be honest. Like that's the number one challenge with software is just getting people to use it. And it being easy to use, so uh, so kudos on that. So uh, now, so you've been with Appfolio for a decade now. That's like a miniature lifetime. And so, <laughs> t tell us like some of the changes you've seen while you've been there. I'm curious about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, so really, we've seen some major shifts in technology solutions over that time period. So one of the things we were really um, fortunate in our timing when we started the company, we started out as a web-based product. So software as a service from day one. Um, and by being web-based, we were able to uh, offer a really complete solution that people could access from anywhere. And when we started selling, you know, Appfolio in the early days, what we'd find was people were oftentimes, you know, using either Excel or QuickBooks or maybe some old uh, solution that was on a CD and a server in their closet, right? And so uh, over time, what we saw was kind of that the technology shifting. So we started web-based, quickly moved into mobile, knowing how important mobile was to our customers and, and you know their customers, so the tenants, the residents of these different units, their property owners as well, and, and all that communication that needs to happen. Um, and we kind of drew a line in the sand and said, hey, anything that you do on your computer, you should be able to do on your mobile device. And that was kind of a different take you know, when we first started down that path. Um, because originally people were coming out with apps that would do just like one little maintenance thing here, or one little leasing thing there. And we said, really, everything needs to work on a mobile device. Um, and, you know, that was kind of the first major shift just since we started at Folio. And then the second major shift has happened in the last couple of years. Um, and you're seeing us invest a lot in it. And it's really uh, what we're calling kind of the fourth industrial revolution. And it's tied to artificial intelligence. Um, and what we're doing now is applying artificial intelligence technology 
to property management problems, um, doing things like uh, having uh, opportunities to create digital employees that help people do things like um, uh, lease up properties faster, handle maintenance issues in a much faster fashion. So that's kind of the new major shift that we're seeing in the industry. And so over the last decade, we've kind of lived through a couple of these different transitions. Um, and, and our goal is always to be leading the charge for our clients on behalf of our clients to make sure that they always have the most modern uh, property management software that uh, is available to them to help them grow their business faster. Okay, great. So, um, so what does that actually mean? You know, so we always hear this idea of AI and usually when I look, a lot of times when I've looked at, you know, different AI systems, it really, a lot of times just looks like a really elaborate tree structure where they've just created a bunch of if then statements and they and they call it AI, but, um, you know, it's not really, you know, uh, so how is this actually coming into Appfolio? Like, what are you guys doing to kind of stay at the forefront and bring AI into your platform and maybe give an example? Yeah, so a great example uh, you guys might have seen. Uh, we made an acquisition earlier this year of a company called Dynasty. And what Dynasty does is uh, it's artificial intelligence for the leasing process. So uh, when you um, uh, give out a phone number for... Uh, for someone to uh, inquire about uh, an available unit, uh, what it'll do is it will start a conversational AI uh, experience with the tenant. So um, via uh, text messages, it'll have full on conversations talking about availability of the unit, pricing of the unit, um, the uh, uh, setting up a time to show uh, the unit as well. So it works with, so you can imagine all the things behind the scenes that have to work for that to happen. It has to be able to have access to your leasing agents showing a uh, calendar. It has to interact with the prospective tenant, find times that work with them. It has to know full on availability of your units um, and then be able to book showings and then follow up with confirmations on those showings and then follow up with how, how was your, how was your showing, right? And what we found is using uh, artificial intelligence, uh, we're able to uh, close uh, uh, people for showings at a much higher rate than humans alone. And it takes away all the mundane tasks, as you can imagine, of just the back and forth of calendaring and all that time that kind of goes into that and lets your leasing agents really focus on what they do best, which is closing the unit, right? Getting that, that prospect in there, uh, booking it. Um, as fast as possible so they can focus on showing the unit and, and doing that. Um, and, and that's a great example. All that's done through conversational AI. If you talk to prospective residents, uh, they really have no idea that um, uh, that they're conversing with uh, an AI uh, device. They really believe that they're talking with a human. Um, and that's what makes it uh, so effective in closing uh, those showings and getting those guys to actually show up on property. Um, so that's a great example of it kind of in action. And I think you'll see that uh, manifest itself in many different areas of the property management business. Think of all, any mundane task that's, that doesn't really require your best, your best uh, staff to do. Uh, booking a showing is, is just a calendar activity back and forth, right? Um, imagine that in other areas of your business where um, you can apply your resources to uh, higher priority projects that let you grow your business. So maybe you could give listeners a little bit of insight into the you know, like behind the scenes there at Appfolio since you've been there so long. So you've you've acquired Dynasty. You're you're imp implementing you know this leasing uh, conversational AI, which sounds really cool. Um, how do you guys go about deciding what is the next feature? How do you guys go about deciding um, internally? And maybe you could share just a little bit about what sort of the culture is because I think a lot of people see you as this big player in the market and and I'd love to hear kind of like what goes on behind the scenes a little bit into the decision making here yeah so I mean we uh, we use a, a few different inputs in terms of how we decide what to focus on and so uh, first and foremost we look at our customers um, and we say okay you know what are our um, customers desires what problems are they trying to solve in their business um, and so we have constant kind of communication and feedback loops with our customers and our customers are very diverse. We have customers, you know, with sometimes 50 doors and we have customers with tens of thousands of doors, right? So they can kind of span a lot. We have customers that focus on single families exclusively. Some do multifamily, some do commercial units, right? So kind of crosses the gamut there, uh, community associations as well. Um, so we're constantly gathering input from our customers, trying to identify really what are the core problems they're trying to solve. And then we take that back and say, okay, how can we apply technology solutions to solve that? So that's kind of one layer. 
The other layer we're looking at is market trends. So we're trying to stay out in front of, okay, what's uh, leasing and occupancy rates look like this year? What does uh, the macroeconomic market, construction rates, all that kind of stuff to try and stay ahead and say, okay, if it looks like, you know, for instance, um, a lot of new construction is going to come on the market, that's going to flood uh, a bunch of supply, which means that it's going to be harder to fill those units. And so focusing on leasing experiences for our clients is going to be critical for their success over the next couple of years. So that's kind of another uh, layer. And then the third layer we look at is major technology shifts uh, that we believe will be kind of game changers in the market that we need to get ahead of on behalf of our customers. Uh, like I mentioned, AI is a big one. Um, that is, you know, really the the big shift um, in technology solutions, we're calling kind of that fourth industrial revolution. Um, we believe that will uh, change the trajectory of software and 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 how businesses operate just as much as mobile and uh, the web did uh, previously. And so, uh, and so, kind of getting ahead of that for our customers and focusing on areas within our product that can leverage that technology uh, to solve our customers' problems in their businesses is the other kind of main input. And that's that's kind of how we, so we take all those, amalgamate them up, and then that's the focus of our teams. And we have a lot of resources at our disposal to uh, execute against that for our customers and, and deliver great products consistently uh, to them. So um, so one of the trends we've noticed like inside our Door Grow Club group, and one of the trends that we've seen a lot of people like pushing and asking for is there seems to be this heightened awareness in the industry of APIs, like integrations and being able to pick and choose different vendors and different tools. Um, and, and I think, um, so I'm curious, like, is that anywhere like in on the roadmap for for this? I know you guys are doing some really innovative things with the API thing. I mean, with the uh, AI, but as far as allowing um, absolutely customers to like create connections to uh, other tools and third party tools. Um, is that on the horizon at all for it for Appfolio? Yeah, so uh, that's a great question. So what we take a look at when we look at um, uh, APIs in general is uh, we really kind of dive back to the problem that we're trying to solve. And so we talk to our uh, our clients and say, okay, well, what's the API being used for? A good example of that uh, in action is, hey, someone said, I have this um, uh, business intelligence database that I want to pipe my data out of and into so I can do these kind of custom kind of queries and reports and it's something for my investors or my owners that's kind of unique to them and I want to do that. Um, other examples that we've seen is, hey, I want to use a uh, uh, particular collections firm uh, to do uh, my uh, tenant collections. So what we do is we we tend to uh, look at those on a individual basis and say, how can we provide the best experience for that particular use case? So instead of a generic, uh, op uh, ger generic API structure that um, doesn't really work really well with a lot of different vendors and you wind up with kind of broken integrations and different things that you'll, you'll hear often complaints about, we tend to focus on uh, particular vendors that we can partner up with. Um, and right now we actually have hundreds of integrations with different vendors behind the scenes. Um, uh, some of them uh, are, are uh, you know, out there um, and we and we talk very proudly about them and partner up with them and others are kind of enabling our customers behind the scenes um, as well. And then uh, late last year, we actually launched a new product um, uh, that's geared more towards larger property management firms um, called Appfolio Property Manager Plus. Um, and as part of that, uh, one thing we heard from them was, hey, I need that data uh, via an API to, to input into things like my, my data warehouse and my business intelligence applications. And there is an actual app, uh, API that comes with uh, that product to do just that. And so kind of on a case by case basis, we do look at those things. And at this point, we, you know, we've, we've done that enough that we have, uh, like I said, hundreds of different integrations with different third parties. Um, but that's kind of the approach that we take when we hear our customers kind of ask that, say, what's the problem we're trying to solve and let's figure out a way to solve it together. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, so I'm going to throw out a feature request because I've been asking okay. every property management software that comes on for this, because I think it'd be game changer, but Zapier integration. I don't think there's any major property management software that's come up with Zapier integration, which would allow them to connect to lots and lots of different tools and resources. But that's just, I'm throwing it out there and uh, <laughs> maybe you guys will do it in the future. We'll see. I think who, the first software to do that is going to get a lot of attention because it really opens up to a lot of, uh, a lot of tools and it's one integration, you know? So, yeah. All right, cool. So let's get into, um, let's, let's talk about this idea 
um, of your employees' experiences, like outside of just meeting customer expectations. Um, it, it, you know, you had sent this over and it says, you know, many firms are still struggling to overcome the challenges with business growth and talent management. So let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, what we hear when we talk to our clients is uh, one that, you know, we'll say, what's the kind of the biggest challenge in your business? And a lot of times it doesn't actually necessarily boil down to software, technology, or things like that. It's, it's the people element of the business, right? Hiring and retaining great people in their businesses is, is, is a struggle. It's a challenge. And there's a definitely talent, sh talent shortages in some key areas amongst them, maintenance and, and some of the other areas of the business. And so um, what we've been able to find uh, through our technology is, is twofold. One is uh, helping you do more with, with the team that you have. Um, so, you know, that's a great way to solve a talent shortage is, as I mentioned, that leasing situation. If uh, I have five leasing agents and I can add a hundred more doors and still have five leasing agents, uh, that's yeah. huge, right? You don't have to continue to try and find new people. The counter to that is retaining those people. So one thing we pride ourselves, as you mentioned earlier, earlier on, is our software being extremely easy to use. Um, what benefit that that gives our clients is um, a uh, our, their, the day to day work, you know, of uh, the employees of the firm is uh, much richer because uh, it's just easy. They're not struggling with their software constantly day in and day out and complaining about that and causing them productivity loss. Um, and then the other factor that comes into, into play there is when you onboard a brand new employee, you can train them so much faster because it's so intuitive and easy to use instead of handing them a big binder and saying, read this for two weeks and then maybe you could start using the software. They can kind of get in day one, start using and be a productive, effective employee much, much faster. Uh, and so those are kind of the areas that we really focus on to try and help our clients with uh, that talent uh, uh, piece of the equation. So in, so you'd sent this over and it says that you just, you worked with um, John Burns a uh, real estate consulting firm, and you discovered that four of the top five factors inhibiting growth were employee related. So what were these five factors? Do you have that? I'm curious um, what those five factors are. Yeah, I think, you know, one thing we should do is uh, uh, perhaps we could actually share out the report with you guys um, yeah. and, and and include that at the end because it's it's, uh, it's a lot to kind of go through the whole thing right now. Um, okay. But uh, but a lot of them were, you know, retention of existing employees, key talent shortages. You know, it's kind of the ones I kind of already hit on where all the added up to the kind of the five. Um, okay. But there's a lot more nuanced detail behind each of the five. And so uh, I think it, it, you know, behoove you guys to kind of read through that that report because I think it is actually extremely valuable um, as uh, companies look to grow their business to kind of read through that because there are some good strategies in there of how to uh, counter that and how to uh, continue to grow uh, despite those five headwinds that might be against uh, against the business. Yeah, we see that. So I, I have the two sand traps, you know, at least that I call. So we've got the solopreneur sand trap, which is about 50 or 60 units. And that's where they're trying to hire maybe their first team member. And that's, you know, that's a challenge to just offload anything and then, or to be able to afford to get a team member on and retain them. And then the next sort of sand trap is kind of in that two to 400 door category. And this is kind of the team sand trap where they, they now have a team and they're trying to figure out how do I like keep good team members? How do I have A players instead of B players? How do I get people that aren't just showing up for a paycheck and want to go home at the end of the day and complain about me and the business and the <laughs> job, you know, and they live for the weekend. And I think, um, I think that's that's a big challenge. And property management is a tough business to be in. Uh, they deal with a lot of difficult things. And so it's, sometimes it is difficult to keep the team happy, positive, and motivated and, and not um, too stressed, you know, in that, well, in that situation. I, and, you know, benchmarking as well. It's like, you know, uh, what you know, what it makes a good leasing agent, what makes a great maintenance technician, what makes a, you know, being able to see like what's normal, what should be expected of them um, in, in a day-to-day -day basis. So being able to kind of look broader, that's another key area. It's like, how do I know if I have a great leasing agent? It's like, if they're closing, the, or, you know, if they're turning a unit in 15 days, is that good? Is that bad? Is that short? Is that long? You know, being able to kind of have that benchmark to compare against uh, industry normals and then also geographic normals, all that kind of stuff is critical uh, as well um, to, like you said, building a great team and making them productive and effective. Yeah. So, all right. So where, um, so, so let's take the listeners. Listeners are, are challenged with growth. A lot of times they're, they're dealing with team issues. They're dealing 
with operational stuff, they're usually pretty in bed with their software. If they're with that folio, it'd be difficult to switch. If they're with, you know, somebody else, it'd be difficult to switch. What a lot of times, and so what, um, what ultimately do you think we should leave with the listeners as a takeaway from this for them to be able to grow their business and to move things forward? Yeah, I mean, the, the things that I always uh, give guidance on is just, you know, make sure you're partnered up with, um, with a company that's looking to the future, right? You want to future proof your business. You want to make sure that um, you're keeping that long term view in mind when you choose software solutions. So you may have some short term pains. And, you know, I'd say it's hard to find a software solution anywhere in any business in any market that solves 100% of everything you want. Um, right. But to make sure that you're uh, partnering up with a company that you feel is like minded, that's progressive, that's constantly pushing uh, forward towards um, towards new things like, you know, I talk about AI. It's like if you believe that AI is, is uh, the future as well, then you want to partner up with a company that is investing in that space that can provide solutions there. So like that, that kind of like mindedness, I think, is one of the most important things that I say that can enable growth. Um, we see a lot of our customers are able to grow their businesses because they invested in solid technology um, early on. Um, and so, so that would be kind of one thing that, that, uh, that I would say is, is a key takeaway. And we, you know, honestly, even at Appfolio, we use software solutions from other companies and that's what we look for when we buy software to help us run our business is who's going to be with us in 10 years, who's going to be in it for the long haul. Um, you know, switching software every year is, is, uh, extremely painful, um, yeah. and it can kind of set your business back. And so you want to make sure that you're, when you do that, that you're, you're really investing for the future. So that brings up a really curious question. So if you're a software company, what software tools do you use internally? And I'm sure listeners would be a little bit curious about that. Yeah, I mean, we use um, lots of different softwares. We use a lot of softwares to help us make better decisions as a business. So we'll use uh, things within the product to serve up insights so we can see, oh, hey, people are spending X amount of time on this page or people um, are clicking on this a lot. Uh, why is that? And then we, it helps us kind of serve up insights that we can then go talk to our customers and say, hey, I notice on the, uh, the, when you're looking at residents, you always click this one link. Is that because it's not as easy to get there as it could be, you know, helping us make the product easier to use. So we'll use a lot of like uh, uh, tracking tools like that to try to make better decisions within, um, within the product. And there's lots of products on the market and we've used a few over the years that do that. Um, so we'll have those types of things. We'll have tools that help us gather feedback we um, are constantly gathering feedback from our customers, actual verbatims, and they'll see that kind of bar sometimes show up at the bottom of the screen that says, hey, uh, would you recommend us to a, to a friend or colleague? You know, what do you think about Appfolio? Help us make it better. Uh, anytime we roll out new features, we have software in there that lets them click and provide direct feedback and say, I would change this, I would change that, um, and we'll iterate on that. And then we have obviously lots of like backend software, just like any company, you know, of decent size. We have the companies to help us manage payroll and, and uh, you know, HR and, you know, yeah. uh, sales, you know, all those kind of things as well. But those are kind of generic kind of company uh, products as well. Um, but the, a lot of what we invest in is technology to make our products better and provide more value to our clients. Cool. So, um well, all right. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show here, Nat. This was this was interesting. How can people get in touch with Appfolio? What's what's the easiest way? Well, I mean, uh, you mentioned a lot of them are Appfolio customers, so the best way is to is to contact your your uh, client services rep if you are a customer. Um, they'll always know exactly where to direct you to um, and, and help you get any any um, any help if you're looking at new features, functionality, you need training, whatever. Um, we can help with that for uh, customers that uh, or for prospects or you know people that are interested in in checking out our um, software. Uh, you can definitely go to appfolio.com and fill out. There's a form right there. It gets routed right to um, one of our agents that can um, that can help you take a look at the software, take a, uh, a deeper dive, learn more about the features, learn more about where we're headed with it, a little bit about the AI stuff I talked about today. Um, you can learn a lot through that as well. So that would be the, the two main paths that I'd say if you're a current customer versus a, uh, someone who's interested in checking out the software for the first time. Cool. Nat, thanks for coming on the show. Glad to have Appfolio represented here on the Door Grow Show. 
Um, and, uh, and I wish you guys success in helping the industry. Awesome. Thank you so much for having us. You know, we're happy to join anytime. All right. Thanks, Nat. Cool. So for those of you that, that are watching, make sure you check out Appfolio. If you don't have a property management software, it's definitely on the my list of the top ones to check out for sure. So take a look and check out Appfolio at appfolio.com. And if you are a property management entrepreneur that wants to add doors, you're struggling, or maybe you just need a better website, um, or maybe you want a little bit of coaching, something you know related to growth, reach out to DoorGrow. Check us out at DoorGrow.com. Schedule a call with, with me or my team, and uh, we will get you connected and uh, help you move things forward. So, And make sure you join our community connected to this podcast, which is the DoorGrow Club. You can get to that by going to DoorGrowClub.com. And if your website is more than two to three years old, it's probably getting stale. It's probably leaking money. So go test it out. Go to doorgrow.com slash quiz, grade your website, check it out. And it's going to give you a letter grade, like going back to elementary school, people. You're going to, you're going to get a grade on your website based on how effective it is at making you money and meeting your needs in terms of growing your business. So Websites are not built to just please Google. They're built to please people. And if they please people, they make you a lot more money. And ultimately, that's Google's goal as well as to please people, right? So that's how they sell ads. All right, so everybody check that out. And uh, until next time, to our mutual growth.